Ferry de Kerkhove, thank you very much for taking the time. This is pretty dramatic moments. We're in the 11th hour, and we're now learning f by confirmation that the Canadian government is not going to further support uh, Mikael Jean's candidacy for Secretary General of the Francophonie. Big developments, late breaking development. What do you make of it? Well, my first reaction is one of shock because, after all, we've been supporting her despite the problems that she's encountered on accountability and other things. But clearly, when you have a former governor general of Canada who's the head of l'Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie and would normally have two mandates, it's rather odd and shocking to see all of a sudden we're whimpering away and withdrawing our support. So if she was a shoe in by the way you describe it, what went wrong? Where did the wheels come off the cart? Well, there's several, several issues that you have to look at. Let's get rid quickly of the so-called, you know, excesses, uh, spending and whatnot. There are several ones that are accurate in a sense that when you move from governor general to a tiny little organization called LOEF, uh, all of a sudden you realize there's a lot of things that you don't have that you used to have at Rideau Hall, and you may be tempted to still act a bit like a queen rather than like a secretary general. And I think she admitted to that. On the other hand, there were some uh, series of exaggeration in the Quebec press, which was a Quebec press very supportive of an alternative to Madame Jean at the time because they wanted to have Mr. Landry at the helm. And at every occasion, they looked at the accounting. And I'll give you an example. The, the famous story about the apartment in Paris. Mm -hmm. Well, because when I was Director General of International Organization, I was responsible for UNESCO, which was the, 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 the residence was initially the residence of our ambassador to UNESCO. And I remember going to see, have a dinner with Mr. Charbonneau. And when I looked at, because he made him have a tour of the place, and when I looked at the kitchen and the, and the facilities and all that, I said, I wouldn't get into that house for at no cost. So granted, she's, the, the, the organization spent 500,000 euro, which is not a huge amount for innovation in any given circumstance. I suggest you do some renovation like I'm doing right now, and you would be surprised how quickly the bill go up. But it is true that on the Quebec side, Mr. Uh, Couillard w admonished her in front of the prime minister and in front of Monsieur Macron by saying, and try and get your act a bit more into order, which is not something normally you do to the Secretary of la Francophonie. So there is this halo. But beyond that halo, there's a series of other issues that one has to look. In fact, it is true that the first mandate takes a while to get started, but she was going into the right direction. There was this silly story about a both for youth and all that. All that are admittedly some error of judgment, but that doesn't disqualify her as the secretary general because the organization was on the right track with limited means. And so I tend to look at this, this kind of all of a sudden renunciation somewhat egregious. But then there are other factors. The, the, the factor is the Macron intervention. Mm -hmm. And on that, score, on that score, I think that we haven't left colonization if the president of France still decides what goes on and imposes via Kagame a anglophone, former foreign minister of the country of Rwanda, and all of a sudden she becomes the enfant chéri, the, the cherished child of l'OIF. And the way Kagame did it at the organization of the, uh, Africa, the United Union, sorry, l'Organisation Interafricaine, the organization of African, African Unity, Union. right? When, when, he, uh, when he said at the very end of the meeting he was chairing, he said, OK, and by the way, uh, I'm proposing my former foreign minister as the new secretary general of la francophonie, no objection, bang. And of course, in Africa, the, the country where dialogue, la parlotte, the, the, the all kinds of, you know, meandering left and right, that kind of coup d'etat is not done. And so all those leaders that were there were in a, uh, them in a state of shock, didn't object. And so Kagame thinks he's had it sewn up. So, so basically, you're saying the intervention of, because a lot of people made a lot about the intervention of Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, who did not prefer Emma, uh, Michael Jean. He preferred the candidate from Rwanda. You're describing her as an Anglophone foreign affairs minister. This is Louise uh, Mushiki Wabao, uh, and she is, she's yeah, going to be the new I'm secretary general. Be, I'm a bit, yeah, I may be a bit harsh in saying that she's an Anglophone because I know she speaks French, but the right. point is that Rwanda has decided that Rwanda would have. English as an official language and French no longer. So okay. if that's not 
a kind of a treason of a francophonie, which Mr. Macron wants to become much more tied to language, culture, and civilization rather than the political side. And that brings the third point. What is the role of la francophonie? An organization has to have the means of its ambition. And unfortunately, the funding of la francophonie has always been rather awkward because you've got two big countries, France and Canada, and the rest of the, the, of the, rest of the group. It's exactly the opposite from the Commonwealth, where you have a series of big countries who can contribute to the funding. So the result is that whenever there's an initiative, it needs resources, and La Francophonie doesn't have enough resources. And that's why some leaders, including, I presume, the French president, consider that the weight of La Francophonie in political issues is not that great. So are we, saying, are we saying, though, then, that Prime Minister Trudeau, who's on his way as we speak to the summit, obviously he and his entourage and the government of Canada became convinced that uh, Madame Jean didn't have the support of the Francophonie, of the organization. Is this a black eye? You say it's, it's quite extraordinary that she'd not be asked to serve a second term or re-elected. Is this a black I, I, eye and is the fault the Canadian government's or is the is fault is something inherent in about the Francophonie uh, lobbying? I think it has to do with the prime minister deciding to cut loose and, and, and rather not go further into the, the support. And, and that's, but there's also some political implication for that. Um, the, the, the idea that maybe, maybe that the prime minister would want the help of Mr. Macron to get the support of African country for a candidacy to the Security Council, maybe one of the instruments whereby they decided to let go Madame Madame Jean. There's also the issue, and I agree that's a real one, that you know, I've been a Sherpa to la Francophonie, and the consensus being what it is, you do not want to see a battleground in the midst of the summit, which was going to obtain had Madame, had Madame Jean got the support of Canada. Mm -hmm. When you have one of the two major funders of the organization bailing out, she is toast. There's no question about that. And, and I think that's very, very unfair. They could have found an alternative solution to say, OK, you get two more years, and then Madame Mushikawa Bo gets the, the next six years. But this, this is a lack of elegance that I find very surprising. But there's one point that has to be recognized. The African failed to have a united front, which is very seldom in the case of Africa. Usually they are really superb at every candidacy at the UN and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they didn't have a, they didn't have the, a, a unanimous candidate four years ago. So that's 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 how Mrs. Jean squeezed in as a Haitian Canadian or as a Canadian of Haitian origin. So it is. There's a kind of unwritten law that say the Secretary General of La Francophonie has to be an African. But I'd like to come back to a previous point. Mm -hmm. The influence of La Francophonie is very much tied to the the, the 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 persona of the Secretary General. And I always said right from the beginning, Madame Jean would have huge shoes to fill because she was falling on the stupid of Abdou Diouf, the former president of Senegal, the father of of democracy with Leopold Senghor, Senghor in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Africa, and with a huge amount of influence. Mr. Mr. Duke could pick up the phone when there was an issue, a political major issue in, on the ground in some country of French Africa, and he could, by a phone call, reduce the intensity. I don't think that Madame Jean has that capability. On the other hand, she had a solid program, and, and I, I know it, it's a very credible one. The problem is there's a lack of means. So basically, there's four hits against her. And there's one positive hit which no longer nobody wants to hear anymore. Well, it sounds as if it's going to be an interesting time. We'll be watching the, uh, the Sommelier de la Francophonie, maybe for reasons other than the content of the official agenda of the summit. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your insights with us. With pleasure. Thank you for having me.